Hi, I'm uh, Colin Reed, part of a uh, newer professor in the accounting group, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about my research in inside debt as a role uh, and the role it plays in CEO compensation. So inside debt's kind of a new term, um, and when we say inside debt, we're talking about any compensation that's paid to executives after retirement. So it could be a pension, it could be deferred comp, that, those are the two primary categories. And so um, they've been around for a long time, but until 2007, the SEC didn't mandate any disclosures concerning inside debt, or very limited. So we didn't really know what impact uh, they were having. So just to give you a feel for some of these values, um, this is at the beginning of uh, the sample period in, the, in one of the papers, S&P 500, the top 10 inside debt values, and these are in, in millions. So um, Ed, Ed Whitaker at AT&T, which was the largest, had a pension value of 85 million and deferred comp of, of 74 million. So they're, they're pretty big numbers. Um, and what's interesting about them is, unlike stock that's somewhat volatile and dependent on the market, this is uh, pretty much a promise to pay. It's cash that these executives receive after retirement, with one exception. If a firm goes into bankruptcy, generally they lose this money. Okay, so the idea is that um, with agency theory, Jensen and Meckling discussed this just a little bit, but we have these agency costs that arise between stockholders and debt holders, right? And traditionally, when executives have been compensated heavily with stock, then they act on behalf of the stockholders and the debt holders are left out, and that creates these agency costs. So Jensen and Meckling suggested, well, if we give executives, CEOs, this inside debt, or this promise to pay them something in the future, they become like a debt holder, right? Because they are owed money by the firm sometime in the future. And what that does is um, they make some of their choices a little bit more conservative. They take a little bit less risk with the firm. And their, uh, their idea was that if a firm, say, had 25% debt leverage as part of their capital, that if you gave the CEO 25% of this inside debt, that everything would be in balance. And uh, that would be kind of a, a best outcome. Now, since we've had some data to look at this, we do find that as inside debt increases, firm risk decreases. So as these executives get more inside debt, they, they uh, take less risk with the firm, which is kind of how this flows into our governance literature. Because, um, you know, 15 years ago we didn't, uh, I, I would say in the, the finance accounting world, risk wasn't as big a concern as maximizing shareholder value, right? But after the recent uh, collapses and declines, risk is now really important. The SEC actually mandates that companies disclose in their proxies how their compensation will affect risk, firm risk. So um, these, these early papers have, have found um, that uh, inside debt increases, firm risk decreases, and then there's other papers uh, in the accounting world that show that if this inside debt is, is tied to earnings, meaning uh, if in the last five years the pension can really increase based on the last five years of company earnings, then managers will actually manage earnings, um, not necessarily fraudulently, but manage earnings upward to maximize their pension. So this gave us the idea that maybe there is some unique characteristics to inside debt, and it's not all the same. And so that's really uh, what we are doing in our, in our paper uh, and in another project and just asking the, the, the simple question of, is all inside debt the same? Or does deferred compensation work differently than pensions? And what we're finding is that because deferred compensation is generally tied to stock price and generally paid in a lump sum, that it really doesn't have much impact on constraining risk because at the end of the day, it looks similar to stock. Whereas pensions, that are paid out over 20 years in an annuity form, they're really driving this risk reduction because CEOs, knowing that they're owed this cash in the future, are concerned about getting that cash. So they, they may not invest in a positive net present value project in order to store cash to make sure that it gets paid. 
Now we also look at payment form of these SERPs, which SERPs are Supplemental Executive Retirement Plans. They're the pension plans we're looking at that are above and beyond um, tax qualified plans. So they're not protected, that's why they, if they did go into bankruptcy, they would lose this form. So we look at things like, do executives um, have their plans um, protected by trusts, uh, either a rabbi trusts or secular trusts? Do they negotiate to have them paid in a lump sum as soon as they retire so that uh, they, they are not as concerned about losing this amount? Because if you're going to receive your pension over the next 25 years and you're no longer in the firm, well, then the firm risk is in somebody else's hand that you can't control, which has to make you somewhat uneasy. Um, and then we're also looking at the, the last question of uh, executives do have the choice to contribute to their deferred compensation. So um, what impact, what does that signal about this executive? What, what, what signaling effect uh, does that have? And, and we haven't addressed that, that question at this time. But uh, we think it's, a, it's an interesting issue, especially as boards and compensation committees continue to think about how to properly address uh, risk taking by executives. Because it's easy looking at those values to dismiss them as excessive compensation. Perhaps they are. But if they're structured correctly and they help mitigate risk, then uh, we might not dismiss them so quickly. So. So I guess we'll open up for questions for...